Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the channel. Good to see you again. In this video today, I thought we would take a look at something from a user's perspective. Somebody brand new to Microsoft 365, what's their experience gonna be? How do they log in? How do they find and use their core apps? Uh, what is Outlook? What is OneDrive? Teams, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, all that sort of stuff. What's the experience like to a brand new user? We're gonna find that out right here, right now. So Stella is logging in to Microsoft 365 at office.com. She puts in her user credentials, enters her password, and what are we going to see? Well, first we're getting an MFA challenge, which is great. So we're logging in as securely as possible. We can stay signed in and don't show this again. Wonderful, office.com, what do we got? Awesome. Well, we get an introduction to the Microsoft feed, discover and learn about people and interests relevant at work, uh, introducing tags, create customized tags to organize anything in your account. Okay, that's fine. A bit boring, but I suppose quite useful. What do we see? Okay, welcome to Microsoft 365. Down the left-hand side, we've got some uh, items here. We're in the home section right now. We can create things. What can we create? We can create documents, presentations, workbooks. So that's uh, Word, PowerPoint, Excel. We can use Microsoft Forms. We can do quizzes in Microsoft Forms. We can use OneNote for um, uh, taking notes. Uh, we can use Microsoft Lists. We can use ClipChamp Video. This is all with a Microsoft 365 E5 license that I have assigned to Stella and we can start with templates. So right within this screen, there are lots of great options that we can uh, get started with for PowerPoint. So we can see all of these templates that Stella can use, and she can click on these and use them right within the apps that she's got online, the online versions, without even installing the, the desktop apps yet. So we've got the same sort of things for Excel. We can uh, use a Excel event planners, we can use milestone infographic timelines, that sort of thing. And Word, it's giving us some uh, good stuff for Word here as well. So proposals and marketing plan templates, lots of good starting points. But if we go back to the home, uh, what can we do here? What can we actually install on to our computers? Now I'm working on a Mac here, but the principle is very, very similar within Windows devices. Uh, install and more, the drop down here. What can we do? We, we can install Microsoft 365 apps onto our computers right from here. We can explore our apps or we can install the Microsoft 365 mobile apps. So what happens if we click to install? It opens up a new tab here and it shows us what we have access to. So we can install Office which uh, consists of the usual Outlook, uh, Excel, Word, as we've already seen, PowerPoint, on uh, up to five PCs or Macs, five tablets, and five smartphones. You can view the apps and devices that you already have it installed on. So we can do that. Um, and I actually don't have any in this, uh, in this instance, so that's good. Uh, and I can install Office right from here. If I click to do so, it'll, it'll set it off. I don't want to do it because I've actually already got it on this device and it'll just come up with a screen uh, in, in the middle and you'll get a, a few questions and a progress bar. It'll install and then uh, depending on your, your download speed, you should have Office onto your computer, the full fat desktop versions within, um, within a short period of time. Okay, so there we go. Let's just go uh, back. Uh, but it's just as easy and sometimes just as convenient these days to use the online versions. So we can do that right from here. We can explore those apps. So from the install here, we can do the same there. Uh, so let's do that. And we can see what we've got under apps. We've got Teams. So Stella can get right into Teams and uh, start communicating with her colleagues. Teams will open in the browser. And again, with the Office 365 installation, the full fat client downloads, Stella's gonna be able to get Teams on her on her laptop as well. The great thing with Teams actually is that it is the same on all of your uh, devices, either br browser or, um, 
or uh, or the full fat version. You'll see Stella here has the option to try the new teams, which is uh, coming uh, to all teams very soon, really. So uh, don't ask me again. Let's just uh, switch to the new teams experience. You get this lovely teams new here, and that should launch uh, in a few seconds. So while we're waiting for that, let's check out some of our other apps. We can go into Word and we can start with a blank document. We can start with some general notes or so lots of different options here to get started. So if we open a blank document, uh, Stella can get right to work uh, with a blank doc. I'm in dark mode here, as you can see. I've got a nice privacy option there. Uh, okay, Stella starts typing. This is my first doc. Okay, and it auto saves. You'll see there it auto saves and it calls it document. And it auto saves, as you can see, it calls it document right there. But you can call that whatever you want to call it. We can rename that to. Uh, anything you like, we'll just put uh, Stella's document, and, and there we go, we've got that. So uh, let's come out of that, and uh, now if we do a little refresh, we should see, uh, there we go, there's the document there. We, we've got a recommended document because we've just opened that, but we've got a list of our documents now there as well, which is pretty cool, really nice. And we can go right back into that, we can open that within the... Uh, within the desktop apps as well, if we want to. If we synchronize our OneDrive to our desktop, we're, we're gonna have that flexibility. So cool stuff. Let's go back to home. What else have we got? And we're now seeing that on the home page as well. Let's go back to explore more apps. So uh, we've looked, uh, is Teams open yet? Yes, it is. We've got Teams open. We can see some um, chats that I did with Stella in a previous, uh, a previous in incarnation or, or video. Uh, you can turn on desktop notifications if you want to. You can see what teams you're a member of here. You can uh, request to join new teams. You can chat, you can see your calendar, which will all be linked to your email calendar in Outlook as well. So we can also start Excel. So we can start Excel with a um, various templates. We can open a blank workbook. Uh, again, if we put any data in, and this is where you really need Miss Excel, Kat Norton, because she is the person to talk to about Excel. Go check out her videos. Um, but uh, I, I am really not an Excel person, but let's just put in uh, some numbers <laughs> just so we've got some data in there. You can expand that out to fit. You can see how terrible I am at Excel, but again, it's going to save that automatically and it's going to call it book. But again, we can change that to uh, Stella's book or whatever you want to call that. And, and it will, by default, save that to your OneDrive, which we'll get to in a minute, which is pretty cool. So there we go. And there's Excel. Uh, we've got PowerPoint for presentations. We've got uh, Outlook for um, your emails. So if we go into Outlook, uh, all so, so good with, um, with the online versions of Microsoft 365. You can do everything in the browser, which is super convenient as long as you're online, of course. That's the advantage of the full fat desktop apps with the exception of Teams, which still requires you to be online even in that full application. But here in Outlook, at outlook.office.com, if you want to get directly to it, Stella can send emails, she can compose a new email, she can do a new event or a group, or she can, uh, link to documents and spreadsheets and presentations right from here as well. Sending emails is super convenient. She can send one to uh, anyone who's uh, part of that organization. So uh, we can search for me and we can uh, send, hi Peter, and we can type uh, to insert files there. You can, lots of prompts you can put in, send the email, and that gets sent right to my inbox. I should be seeing that popping up on my phone. 
any moment and I can reply to it and you can see the message come in, but uh, it's not arrived yet. So we can come back and take a look at that. But oh, there it is. I shall uh, quickly reply to that and say, hi Stella. It would help if I could spell and use the appropriate capitals. Not that it matters too much for demo, but I do like to be accurate with that sort of thing. I'm a bit of a, a grammar and spelling freak. <laughs> if you know me, you'll know that to be true. So I've sent that and there it is. We get a nice little notification. And if we go to the inbox, there's my reply and awesome stuff. And you can get sort of threads. You can view the emails and threads. I personally hate that. I always turn that off. And this is the sort of thing you can do in your general settings. So if you, you go into here, you can see your email settings and you can change all sorts of things like your layout. Do you want to see a focused inbox where it separates into focused and other emails? I don't want to sort my messages. You can choose your text space and sizing, all that sort of stuff, smart suggestions, attachments. Um, get the settings that you want, save those settings. You can do that within all these applications. Um, customize it to be the way you want. You double click that, it opens it in a new screen and you can get all sorts of options for deleting the message, archiving it. You can report it as phishing or junk if uh, if you don't recognize the sender, always important to be vigilant. You can reply to all if it's a, a multi-person email. Uh, you can zoom in, you can forward the message, you can mark it as read or unread, categorize, flag, print, all that sort of good stuff. Cool indeed. So that's Outlook. OneDrive. Now, OneDrive in Office 365 or Microsoft 365, this is where all your files get stored, your individual files get stored by default. In your OneDrive here, we'll see the uh, Excel sheet and the um, and and the Word doc that, uh, that, that Stella created. I have no idea why that took me into Delve there. I'm sure I did not click on Delve. That is really weird. Let's try that again. OneDrive, so weird, but now we're into OneDrive anyway. So yeah, this is the personal storage area within Microsoft 365 for any licensed user. Any of their documents, spreadsheets, whatever, and you can see them there, right there. I've got my Stella book and Stella's document and this is like a an overview in the home screen. You can see uh, your recent content. You can filter by application PDF as well, available to you here. And uh, if you want to drill down more specifically, you can go into my files and you can see here the files listed in, in such a way uh, that is um, more drilled down, get more detail. And right from the, the OneDrive, um, you can uh, you can manipulate this content uh, as as you need to. So pretty cool stuff. Under the shared uh, button here, you can see content that is shared with you or by you. So if if I uh, as Peter shared one of my files, one of my Word files in my OneDrive or in a SharePoint or in a Teams team, if I shared that with Stella. That's a quick and easy, I mean, Stella would get a notification that I'd shared that content with her via email. She'd be able to go into it. But if she wanted to get back to it quickly, coming here to the shared with you area, it will show all those files that are shared with you. A top tip that a lot of people still don't know about all, all these years that uh, OneDrive's been in existence. By you, by the same token, if, if you go into your files and and, and you want to share this, and you can do that by clicking the three dots there, the ellipsis button, click on share, and you can choose who you want to share that with. Again, I can uh, uh, select myself there. I can put in a, a message that goes with the email. Uh, I can choose uh, what can be done with the link. So I can uh, say can edit or can view, and I can uh, put expiry dates in there and actually set a password as well. You can get very, very granular with how you choose to share this, but we'll just apply that in a in a more sort of general, generic way. So that workbook is shared. And now if I go to shared uh, by you, uh, that should catch up in a moment if we do a refresh, but I'm probably going too quickly for it to, uh, to show just yet. We might come back to that in a second, but uh, if we go back to home, um, so as you go back 
to home and you and you start seeing more and more things get populated you'll you'll get a sort of customized feed as this as this gets created um, and it'll stop showing things like uh, uh, like the apps the view that we got when we first came into this it'll start adapting and building this for you um, what does this say here all your work in one place now you can easily find and share all your work from Microsoft lists loop power bi or whiteboard cool cool let's close that but um, what can you do from from up here what are these options so if you click on the name here of, uh, of Stella it just tells um, Stella the details about herself her email address uh, you can uh, click to view the account so Stella can do that right from here my account at Microsoft.com and if it ever catches up we shall be able to to see all those details the internet seems to be on a go slow today spinning 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 that is so frustrating so while we're waiting for that to catch up, let's actually have a look in this Delve tab. Now Delve is uh, something I got to admit, I didn't even realize this was still around, but this is where you can update your profile uh, and see details about your profile. So you can update it here, you can put a photo in, you can put uh, information in about your contacts, you can add your birthday, your mobile, all sorts of stuff here, um, skills and expertise. So you can really populate out your profile here in, uh, in Microsoft Delve so let's just go back to that first page and you can get um, insights into your recent documents and see uh, click on other people in your organization to see what they're working on discover documents from people around you and this builds up over time a lot of people get very concerned about the privacy of this some people worry uh, that it will show uh, content from all over Microsoft 365, but that is not the case. Uh, you'll only see content that you have permission for or has been explicitly shared with you. Um, so, and, and by the same token, by you uh, for others. So it is it is appropriate. Let's go back to the My Account. Is it there? Oh, how satisfied are you? Not at all, really, because it took ages to open. But <laughs> anyway, you can see all of your details here about your security info. So you can keep your verification methods up to date. You can change your password. You can manage the devices that you have attached to 365. You can see the organizations that you are a part of. As one of the things you can do, uh, and this relates mainly to Microsoft Teams, is you can be part of other organizations. You can be invited to be part of other organizations, Microsoft Teams, and uh, share some of their sites and uh, Teams and, uh, and SharePoint and Teams, etc. So you can see what you're in there, and you can alter those as needed. You can view your settings and privacy. You can review your recent activity. And you can install and manage your office applications from here and see your subscriptions. So what have I got under subscriptions? I should see that I have a Microsoft 365 E5 developer license uh, without Windows and audio conferencing. Cool stuff indeed. Let's go back. And that was probably a mistake. Right, we'll, we'll leave that there for a, for a moment. So how do you get to other stuff? In fact, have we been through everything here? So... Let's just take a look. You can create favorites. You have a recycle bin. So if you delete something, it goes to the recycling bin. Uh, let's take a look in the recycling bin. And there's nothing in there. So let's let's delete a file. Let's, uh, let's delete this document. We highlight that. And if you click the ellipsis, you get all sorts of options here. You can open it. You can preview it, share it, copy the link, manage access, who can access it. Uh, you can download a copy, rename, move it to another place. You can use Power Automate to uh, to automate actions by creating flows, all sorts of stuff you can do. But we want to delete this doc. Let's delete that doc. Okay, it's gone. If we're in the recycle bin now, there it is. Uh, what you do have is a second stage recycle bin. So you, you get lots of chances to get this document back. So if you, if you go into here, uh, and explicitly delete it again, you could restore it from there back to where it came from, then it goes into the second stage recycle bin. From here, you can uh, you can restore it back, uh, or you can delete it completely, and then it's gone forever. So this gets you a total of, before it, before it goes, uh, you get a total of something like 93 days, I think it is, before the document is gone, 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 and you can't get it back. Um, that all depends on 
a, a multitude of factors in terms of what retention policies are set up within your organization by administrators. So you may think that you're deleting a document, but there is going to be another copy of that stored in line with regulatory requirements sometimes. It may also be the case that your organization has a, a Microsoft backup uh, feature installed, so your content may be getting backed up. So even if you've deleted it, there's going to be ways for them to get that back. So there you go, that's a recycle bin. You can browse files by people, you can browse files by meetings. So you can see a loop voting table was shared with uh, Stella by me some, some 14 months ago. You can see meetings, really cool stuff. And from the, um, the app launcher at the top left here, you can get access to all of those apps and more uh, right from here so really convenient stuff and if you go to click explore all apps you can see them all in this lovely view so we can see everything that we've got uh, we can scroll down we can see forms we can see sway which is a, a very interactive reports and presentations application sort of like the um, evolution of powerpoint in many ways but it's never really taken off um, to the extent that PowerPoint did and still is in use. Power BI, Calendar, but on what you see, he will depend on the license that you have. You can do to-do lists to manage your tasks, Microsoft Project, bookings, lists. Lists are really cool. Uh, SharePoint, you can get to SharePoint, which is kind of like the, the older, the bigger sibling to OneDrive. It's the, the more collaborative space where Team sites are, are set up for departmental functions in organizations like um, marketing, um, uh, finance, uh, purchasing or procurement, whatever you want to call it, or human resources, all that sort of thing. Insights, this is part of the Viva suite of uh, products, uh, Viva Insights, which is all about well-being and productivity. Um, tons of stuff, tons of stuff indeed. And you can really get a lot done uh, in Microsoft 365 uh, without even leaving the browser. So convenient. Look at getting more apps. What what does that take us to? Um, a big white screen at the moment, but uh, never mind. We've seen a lot. We've seen a lot. Now, you'll notice here that Stella has an admin button here as well. Oh, here come the apps. Uh, most users will not see this. For, for purposes of previous demonstration, I set up Stella as a, a particular admin for the organization so she could create users and manage settings and that sort of things. But this will not be there for the majority of users in any organization. So here we go, apps. We can get more done with, with apps and we can see other apps that are available and whether or not you can get those will all depend on what your admins have set up for you and uh, enabled you to do. So there you go little uh, walkthrough of office.com and the sort of first experiences that uh, users will have when signing in. It's very, very instinctive, very easy to use. And the main apps that users will find themselves using will be these top ones, the Outlooks and the Teams and the Words and Excels and probably the PowerPoints as well. OneDrive, all your stuff will be stored there. You're good to go. There you go, pretty cool stuff, I think. Uh, it takes you back to when you first started using Microsoft 365 or Office 365, as it was known 10 or so years ago. Cloud technology, it's come a long way in that time. It really has. The core principles are still the same, but boy, have we evolved with things like Copilot and uh, Loop components and, and all sorts of wonderful things that make it easier to get our work done more efficiently and in line with our health and well-being. Superb. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're new to Microsoft 365 and have you had any challenges getting used to working with it. I'm always interested in hearing the end user perspective. Super cool. If you're new here uh, and you've enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. That helps me more than you realize. It really helps me climb up the, the YouTube algorithm as it's known. Uh, hit the subscribe button too if you're planning to stick around uh, that way you will see me in your list of subscriptions and uh, don't forget to turn on the notifications bell as well which also will ensure you never miss a video you can also support the channel as well if you want to consider doing so i have four levels of membership that you can consider very flexible you can cancel anytime you are most welcome to join our growing community and you'll get 
things like uh, member perks, like badges and uh, member videos, depending on which level you join at and, and, and so on and so forth. But there you go. Thank you so much. See you on another video very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.